Behold the kingdom of heaven. It's not a parody. Behold the kingdom of heaven. It's not a religion. The kingdom of heaven is the reign, rule, dominion of the creator of the universe. Oh, the kingdom of heaven is here and now. He who came to Moses saying, I am who I was, I am who I will be, I am that I am. Go tell the children of Israel, I am. And he gave the children of Israel to know his name, that all the nations should know the name of Jehovah, the creator of the heavens and the earth. And so today I come to lift up the name of that person, of the Elohim, who came to earth and was manifested in the flesh, who was crucified, buried, and as he foretold, spent three nights and three days in the belly of the earth and was raised from the dead. He was crucified for the sins of the world, but he who had no sin offered himself as a substitution to take the execution of the place of whosoever would to simply believe on him. It wasn't something that a martyr could do, but only the lawgiver himself could do. Only he who had the authority to judge the living and the dead had authority to intercede for the sins of the entire world. And he came as he foretold. Oh, he spoke through David. We read the 22nd Psalm. He foretold the whole situation and while he was nailed up on the cross he recited the 22nd psalm how the bulls of Bashan had surrounded him yeah they even pierced him in the side his blood came streaming down but it wasn't like the Roman the Roman thought he wanted to check and see if he was dead but the blood came streaming down and there was an earthquake and the rock split and down 20 feet under the ground was the mercy seat that was hidden in the when the Babylonians came to find to destroy the temple, the, the holy the holy seat, the mercy seat with its gold cherubim watching over it, receiving the, once a year for Yom Kippur. The blood came down and it was satisfied. He satisfied the Passover he can't satisfy the requirement of Yom Kippur. So there's no longer any requirement for the blood of bulls or lambs or goats or sheep. But he declared beforehand to his disciples that this blood is the blood of the new covenant. No longer shall it be that you have to go every year and, and offer a ransom for your own sins. But he has authority laid down his life to pay our ransom once and for all that for whosoever will believe on him it could be accounted for righteousness whosoever will believe on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to know salvation Yeshua HaMashiach he is the Messiah I declare to you today to this same one Yeshua HaMashiach he is Jehovah hallelujah we say it in English, the Godhead, the God, in Spanish, Dios. In Hebrew, Jehovah, our Elohim, is a plural term. King David knew the Son. In the second Psalm, it says that on the way to the Father, don't pass the Son. You kiss the Son on the way to the Father, lest He be angry and you perish on the way. Without this sacrifice without the Lamb of Jehovah, without the fulfillment of, at the cross, we have no salvation. There is no reconciliation. But because He came and withheld not His own life, but offered Himself as our ransom, 
we all have this precious invitation to be reconciled with our Father in heaven. There is not another name on earth whereby a man can be saved from his sins except the name uh, of Yeshua HaMashiach, who we call Jesus. There's not another name whereby anybody can be saved. You, you can't, we can't earn our way to heaven. There's no way we could any way come near to that precious price that Jesus paid on the cross. What well, Yeshua suffered on that cross was something that no man could do and live. But if any man could, to die as a martyr, it, if he was righteous and he committed no sin, he could be accepted into heaven by his own righteousness, but he could not intercede and justify anybody else. But this one, Jehovah in the flesh, became holy from heaven, and he sanctified this offering. He sanctified us with his own blood. He justified us that we believe on him with his mercy and his grace. I love that it's, it's written. Say he came, he brought grace and truth. It, it did, he didn't say he brought truth and grace, but he brought grace and truth. Because of the truth, we all need grace. If, if it was on the truth alone, no, no, nobody would have hope. But because of his grace to cover our sins, and the truth be known of his mercy and grace. It covers all, it's enough, his loving kindness enough to cover all our faults and all our sins to forgive us of all of our iniquities, to wash away all the sins of the world and be remembered no more for those who would trust in him. Oh, he did die on the cross that we could receive a forgiveness of sins but remain living like devils but he gave this invitation to come and be reconciled with him to fellowship with him we walk with him and learn of him and enter into his house and into his kingdom to receive the spirit of life which brings forth more life and life abundantly he talked about that river of living water that if any man drink of this water he shall never thirst again talking about the righteousness of Jehovah. Hallelujah. In Hebrew, the term for righteousness is about mercy. It's about loving kindness. It's about holding your, holding your speech and not speaking against your neighbor, but having mercy and speaking and choosing to speak good, and if you can't speak good, speak nothing at all. Today I come out and I'm looking for someone that's blind to receive sight. I, I went up to the hospital and, and there was a, a man, he said he didn't have time. I talked to me, talked to you about the community, he didn't have time. I think about how you should had that power all his days, but until he started his ministry at the age of about, he's about 30 years old. This ministry is only one year. It wasn't three and a half, he's only one year, 70 weeks, counting from the baptism in the water to the baptism of the Holy Spirit. All that time, he had power to give sight to the blind. But the blind didn't know about it. They didn't ask for it. They didn't seek him. They didn't, they didn't know it, about it. Until he started his ministry and the miracles began to happen. The first miracle was recorded having been at a wedding where he turned water into wine. And, and things started happening. You know, it got to the point where they were bringing all the sick to him. The good news is that He's still healing the sick. He's still giving sight to the blind. He still says, come on to me, all you the labor, and heavy laden, I'll give you rest. He's still saying to me, bring me your sick, bring me your lame, bring me your blind, and I will heal them. 
Oh, that you would know that you were, you say you're rich, but that you would know you're desperately poor, that you can come and buy true gold and have true riches. The words of our Savior, will they ring out for all time, and it's true today. He reaches out and saying, come unto me, and I will not refuse you. He would not refuse anybody that comes to him. I, I was looking at the first chapter of the book of Acts, talking about after the cross, after being raised from the dead on the third day, how his soul was waiting down there, in the, even in the midst of hell, taking our place in hell. But on the third day, Father reached out with his Holy Spirit and brought him out. And he came out of the grave clothes in the tomb. And it came supernaturally through this. So that, you know, he, he could, just like Lazarus, wrapped up in those grave clothes. Uh, it, 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 when you're wrapped up like a mummy, you, it, you can't unwrap yourself you're all your fingers they wrap your fingers they wrap your hands they tie you up i mean even i mean he could be alive in that tomb and nobody would know it except that he supernaturally not only he came out of the grave clothes but he came out of a tomb that had a a, a huge stone that, that that weighed more than a ton rolled it in front of the door and it had a had an iron rod an inch an inch thick iron rod driven through the stone into the, the wall. It would take, it'd take something like nine tons to, to snap that, that rod. An elephant couldn't have rolled back that stone. But the angel, maybe it was Michael, I don't know which angel it was, but one of the mighty angels came down and rolled away the stone. Not to let him out. Not to unwrap his grave clothes, but that we could see he was risen. Today, that the tomb is still empty. Today, even you can look on the internet. Joshua Aaron has a, a video of the garden tomb. And you can see where that iron rod was snapped off. And they tested it. And to see it, it had... No, no body snapped that rod. They didn't have no elk, no elk. I don't know if they could have got uh, several elephants chained up to snap that rod, but they tested that iron and it proved something that the might, the power of an angel of the Most High was there on that, <laughs> on that morning of the resurrection. We have evidence and proof that he rose from the dead, and not only because of an empty tomb, but because he's visiting his people today. He visited me, first he visited me when I was 19 years of age, but he'd been watching me all my life. I, I felt his Holy Spirit moved through me and, and, and healed a woman who couldn't open her hands. She, she had her hands going around like claws. She couldn't open her fingers. Uh, there's a, a man who he had been smoking cigarettes, chain smoking cigarettes since he was eight years of age and he's over 40. And his lungs are so full of tar, it, it just it would reek up the whole house. Just without not smoking, just exhale all the tar nicotine. But I have to request for it, healing. Father healed his lungs like a newborn baby. Today we have testimonies all over the earth. People receiving healings of, of new organs growing, a woman having a mesesomy growing a new breast, of uh, deaf receiving hearing that blind receiving sight, lame walking. But for centuries, the, the faith has been going on 
is enough that he died on the cross. And true, true, if he didn't do anything else, it's enough. He went to the cross to give us a pardon of sins. But his desire is even to reach our needs here and now. You see, the, the word for salvation in Hebrew isn't limited to the hereafter. Salvation, I, when I was growing up, when the, every time I heard about salvation, it was always about after you die, then you get to see heaven if you're good. But that's not what salvation is about. Salvation is a spiritual, it's physical, it's here and now and forevermore. The kingdom of heaven has no end. If you want to know for yourself, if you don't know the voice of your Savior in the pardon of your sins, I speak to you, you can call upon Him. Call upon Him while He may be found. Taste and see that He is good. We're living in a time of a great awakening and all the damage, all the lies that the devil did are being undone. Everything that had been done to silence the truth, they say, okay, we, we want, it's okay to know about Jesus and, and then obey the government, but they didn't tell you you could live saved here or now. I even hear some denominations that say, oh, no body perfect but Jesus. But if you live to see him, to be with him, to know with him, to walk with him, he is in you and with you and for you and you can overcome the world and all the lies of the evil one. I was reading about how they start they were burning Hebrew Bibles. They even found some Hebrew manuscripts left. They're, still, they're, getting, ready, they're getting ready to have some new uh, Bibles printed in the from the original in the original Hebrew and translated from the original Hebrew. It's a lie that they that they only spoke Greek in the first century. No, they did they spoke Hebrew all of everything a whole Bible was originally written in Hebrew. But to begin to set off the beginning of this call of repentance, and I'm calling for worldwide repentance, that every denomination fall, that the kingdom of God reign forevermore, the kingdom of Jehovah reign over all the earth. I come, I'm going to bring a, a I'm going to read this prayer for salvation. If you open your mouth and Repeat after me, you can know the salvation here and now. And be blessed forevermore. In our Father's house, there's many mansions. If it were not so, he would have told us so. There's room in heaven for you and for me. In Hebrew, our Father's name is, to say our Father, Father God in Hebrew, my Father, Abinu Elohenu Belek Aholam, my Father in Heaven, King of the Universe. This is, this is a prayer. If you want to know Jesus, if you want to know Yeshua, how much, if you want to see me in the, your neighbor in the last book of life and meet with him and be his friend and know him for yourself. Repeat these words. Say, I recognize I recognize that I'm a sinner and that my sin separates me from you. I freely repent from all my sins. I confess Jesus as my Lord and Savior, Jehovah, Yeshua, HaMashiach. I believe he died for my sins 
I believe with all my heart that Abino Elohim, our Father in heaven, raised him from the dead. Jehovah Yeshua HaMashiach, I ask you to come into my heart and change my life. I renounce all covenants with the world, the enemy, and my flesh. Jehovah Yeshua HaMashiach, thank you for redeeming me with your blood at the cross. Thank you for restoring me blameless before you as your child. Thank you for loving me enough to hear and answer my prayers. Do and lead me with your Akhapakodesh that I may have wisdom and virtue to represent your kingdom all of my days on earth, transform me with your counsel, and I will trust you always. It is just as simple as that. Because there's power in the words. With words, everything was made from nothing. Our Father said, let the light be, and there is light, and there is light today, as forever. He said, all the galaxies in order. We find that there wasn't a moment in time when all the planets were aligned in a straight line, and he set them in their orbits. But to enter into this kingdom, it means forsaking the devil and all his woes and all his curses and all his accusations. If you're willing to set aside all, all your bitterness and all your sorrow, if you're willing to set aside your, all the, the grudges, if you're willing to set aside all that hate, all that those wounds and be healed, to know life, to choose life, you find in Him treasure that endures forever. Blessed be His name, both now and forevermore. Hallelujah to the Lamb of Amen.